What's up, my fellow artists? This is the first video of 2020. In this one, we're doing another drawing tutorial. This one's on how to draw a giraffe. The reference photo was given to us by Michelle Buhofer. Beautiful photo. Definitely check out her Instagram portfolio. I have a link to that thing down in the description of this video. And don't forget, we're on Patreon now, where we're offering exclusive content perks, things like poll voting, where you get to kind of pitch in on what kind of content you want to see in the future from us. Okay, so in this tutorial, we're covering a lot of texture tricks, like I showed you in the lion tutorial. We're covering a lot of form tricks that we used in the hammerhead tutorial. We're covering eraser detail work that we covered in the great white shark tutorial. And we're covering uh, implied lines and defined lines and those differences that we covered in the spider tutorial. I'm excited to show you guys all of these concepts in one tutorial. So let's kick off 2020. <laughs> All right, so for this one, we're gonna be using a graphite pencil and a hoo-hoo eraser, a pentel click eraser, and a mono zero eraser. We're going to be using a soft, medium, and hard charcoal pencil. We're also going to be using a 3 16 and a number three smudger, as well as a sandpaper strip, our tone check paper, and last but not least, the brush. Okay. So as with all drawings, the first step in this one is drawing the basic outline of our reference image. So when it comes to outlines, um, we like to use our graphite pencil. Reason why is because it's extremely easy to erase. And essentially what we're doing here is we're just going through and we're doing what I like to call framing our charcoal piece. So what I'm doing is I'm simply identifying the um, main contours of the reference image. I'm not going to worry about form or anything like that. In this step, I'm simply drawing out the uh, basic outline of the reference image. But if you look at the reference image, anywhere where there's going to be significant changes in uh, tone from complete black to complete white, I want to uh, highlight those and outline those in my image. So say for example here, I am outlining the eye and the eyelashes of this giraffe. And the reason why is because these are going to be different tonal values of black space next to all white space. But anywhere where there's going to be those breaks, say for example the, um, the spots on this giraffe, I definitely want to outline those. And um, these don't have to be uh, perfect by any means. Um, remember what I always say, I'm a big fan of Salvador Dali because he was quoted with saying, don't worry about perfection, you'll never reach it. Well I like that because that gives us the ability and the freedom to make mistakes with this drawing and grow. But as you can see there, I didn't like the way that looked initially, so I just hit it with my mono zero eraser and started over. And you can do that. Don't think that you're committed at this step. You are totally not. This is just to get a basic idea of where that charcoal is going to lay. But here for the neck, I'm just outlining the uh, dark areas first. In this case, it's all the spots where I'm going to be laying down a lot of dark charcoals. Okay. So that just about does it. But then of course here, these are what I like to call um, form lines. Now this is um, for you um, to see and um, you'd probably benefit from actually doing this in your own drawings 
because what this does is this gives you a basic understanding of how that form is in your image. These are lines that don't actually exist on the reference images you can see, but they are there for you to not forget the principle of underlying form, which is something that um, can be kind of a hard concept to grasp, but it is a concept that will only benefit you once you understand it. So now we're gonna take our tone check paper. We're gonna grind on some soft charcoal and some medium charcoal here. Okay, so now I'm going to take my number three smudger. I'm gonna grab some soft charcoal and do a little bit, do a little tone check, make sure I have the proper tone. I'm gonna to start here at the ear. And you'll notice that we are only focusing on um, our uh, dark tones uh, first, and then we're going to build off of that. And one of the reasons why I like to focus on the dark tones in an image first is because through more smudger work and uh, brush work especially, we'll be able to speak to those lighter tones because what's going to happen is we're going to be taking, as we hit the paper with our brush, we're going to be bringing that charcoal over to those lighter tones. And thus, not only is that going to give us a nice blend between our tones, but that's also going to help accentuate uh, the value between them. And then here what I'm doing is I'm just taking a medium charcoal and I'm just uh, very lightly putting in a, a, a broken um, defined line. And then I'm also going in here on top of those dark tones. And this is really where you're able to um, define exactly where those darker tones are at. So this is basically building our tones by layers. But the cool thing about having the medium pencil here is that it just gives me a little bit more control than the smudger. Here, I don't like that, so I'm gonna bring that in with the mono zero eraser. There we go. And now I'm gonna take my 3 16 smudger. It's a little smaller offers a little bit more pinpoint control. And I'm just blending my dark tones next to my light tones. And this is really helping me bring out the inner form of the inside of this giraffe's ear. And then here's a cool trick if you wanna take your smudger, lay it sideways, and just slightly dab the smudger onto the paper. What this will do is this will give you a, a nice uh, blotchy look that we see on the inside of the ear in this reference image. Okay, and now I'm gonna take the number three smudger with some soft charcoal, and I'm just going to start building up the uh, Aussie cone of this giraffe here. What we're doing is I'm not worrying about finite detail here. This is uh, simply the first layer of mini that uh, we're going to be laying down. And the cool thing about this approach with the soft charcoal is that we'll be able to build more uh, value in this part of the drawing with more layers. But here what I'm doing is I'm taking that medium charcoal and I'm just pulling it up and this is giving me that really nice break between complete dark and lighter tones. And thus this is giving me uh, the maximum amount of value in the top of the draft saucy cones here. Then I'm just taking a smudger I'm just kind of blending this. What this is doing is this is softening up the hair and making it look just a little bit more realistic. Looks like we got some runaways here. Do that initial layer. And then here, if you need to build any shadows or anything like that, 
just press a little harder with your smudger and you'll get a, a darker a darker tone put these runaway hairs here sweet okay so now we're going to do the same thing on the giraffe's other Aussie comb So this is just soft charcoal. Remember the big difference between soft charcoal, and medium charcoal, and hard charcoal is that as you go down the scale, soft charcoal has the least amount of binder in it, medium has a little more, and then hard charcoal has the most. And because of that, the charcoal will hold together nicer with the more binder that it has, and thus it's going to give you a darker tone. So that's one of the reasons why we use soft charcoal, and then we progress down the line. It's all about tones. And the more tones you have when compared to complete white space, the greater you accentuate the overall value scale of your image. Okay, so now we're going to do another tone check here. All right. Now on here, the eye is coming forward. So this part of the head between the ear and the Aussie cone, we want that to be a little darker so that it is pushed back in contrast to the eye. But here with the ear, I'm focusing on the dark tones first, the inside of the ear. And then here, what I'm doing is I'm just going in with my medium charcoal because it, it gives me a lot more control. And I'm simply outlining where I'm going to be filling in the inside of the ear. And then I'm just slowly going to build up that dark tone. Just nice tight little circles. Nothing fancy here. Now I'm just going to take my smudger. I'm going to blend it. See how it gives me that really nice blend, makes it nice and smooth, nice and cohesive. That's what we want. And, and bear in mind, I'm moving very quickly with this tutorial. Uh, with a normal drawing of mine, I'd probably be sitting in the chair for 12 to 14 hours, but in this case, um, I did this drawing in about three hours and then I compressed it through editing. And that's one of the things that I really wanted to speak to in this video is I wanted to show you guys that my drawings, um, like my time-lapse drawings, like say the Mako shark, for example, I drew that over the course of two weeks, you know, working a full-time job, coming home, working on it for about an hour. And then whenever I would get frustrated and I lose my concentration, I would stop. I think Da Vinci was the one that said, take a break and come back to it. And there'll be things about your drawing or your piece of art that uh, maybe you didn't see before. Now we're gonna take the brush. We're just gonna hit it real lightly. You don't have to push very hard at all when it comes to um, brush work with this technique. And as you can see, it gives you a really nice blend and it kind of brings all of those different tones together. And then here what I'm doing is I'm just going through with my medium charcoal. I'm just putting on some broken up uh, defined lines to kind of bring some a little bit more form to that ear. And then here it looks like there's a little bit of uh, hair on the giraffe's mane that goes all the way up the back of its head. So I'm just going to hit that with a smudger. Now I'm going to go in with the medium charcoal here. I'm just going to pull these real quick. There we are. Those look good. And then put a little defined line right there and that'll bring that ear uh, forward. But I'm not getting too crazy with my defined lines on this one. The, the majority of the texture on this giraffe is very uh, soft, so I want to adhere to that. But then here, here's some, uh, some texture. This is the same type of technique that we were using on the lion um, in our previous tutorial. But what I'm doing is I'm pressing very lightly and I'm just essentially going in tiny little circles. 
Yeah, something like this here. Let's see if you can see this a little better. There we go. See something like that. And they can be bigger circles, they can be smaller circles. But the big thing about this part of the drawing that I want you to take away with you is that you don't have to press hard because all of the different tone breaks and then that value that you see underneath the texture, we want to keep that. So we're, you know, kind of get in and then just get out. We hit it real quick, maybe one pass, maybe two. Start from the edge, like I did here, and then work your way in. And as you can see, this approach will give you that really nice, realistic look that we see in the reference image on this giraffe's Aussie cones. <laughs> I like that word, Aussie cone. I didn't realize that's what they were called until I did some research on them. But anyway, now I just go through and just, just, I'm just dabbing this very lightly with my brush. As you can see, that kind of softens it up a little bit. Um, just be very careful though. Um, you can overdo this. Um, you know, I'm not trying to take away all of the sharpness. I like that. Just, there's just certain parts of this that need to be a little darker. So, and the, and the tone does get darker when you, when you dab it with the brush. Now here, this is where those form lines come into play, because what I'm doing is you can see the forehead of this giraffe kind of slopes down onto the, the nose. And so what I'm doing is I am adhering to the flow in the, in the basic underlying form of the giraffe's face, even with my brushwork. And this is why those form lines that we put down in our outline step are so important. The thing about this um, forehead that you'll notice is if you just lightly dab the charcoal on the top where you want basically the brim or the top of the brow to be and then pull down, you'll get a nice sloping look. But remember, this is just an initial step. We are going to be adding detail by using our erasers, especially our Mono Zero eraser, and we're going to be adding detail by taking charcoal away. So just keep that in mind. But the uh, basic uh, principle of identifying those darker tones and accentuating those first is still very much in play here. We're always going to be going after our dark tones first because subconsciously when the viewer is looking at your drawing, their eye automatically picks up lighter tones first. So that's one of the reasons why we go after the dark tones um, when we're drawing is because we will be able to blend those lighter tones um, with uh, brushwork and eraser work. And if that's what the viewer's eye picks up initially, those lighter tones, then we want to be able to, to showcase that. So just keep that in mind. But now here on the lip, what we're doing is I'm just going through and I'm pulling left to right. I'm kind of giving, giving that lip, it's I'm starting to give it that form, as you can see. And here I'm just gonna grab some more charcoal. I'm just gonna very lightly go under the line that I drew in the outline. And what this is doing is this is bringing that, that lower lip and tucking it underneath the, the top lip of the giraffe. Then we're just following that jawline straight onto the face. And then if you'll notice in this part of the reference image, um, our tones are going to be um, extremely dark. And even with dark tones, um, you can build those. So just because it might not be as dark as you are going to finish it off with initially, um, it's just a step. And see, by adding a darker tone, essentially what we've done is we've taken that side of the giraffe's face and we've tucked it behind the nose of the giraffe. And this is um, speaking to the ov overall form of our image.
And using the smudger, what this is doing is this is just giving us a nice blend and it's uh, softening um, the look of our charcoal. So now here what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna put a defined line right here. This is the eye of the giraffe. Do the defined line on the outsides and then I'm moving in and filling in the eye. There we are. Then the eyelashes. Giraffes have some pretty thick eyelashes. So I'm just gonna pull that out. Just on the top or on the bottom and then on the top and then fill it in. And then do the same thing with this part as well. Okay. Now this is something that I wanted to show you. Um, whenever you're using straight charcoal pencil, always be aware that um, it's extremely powerful so you can go in and you can make something a little bit too dark if you're not careful. So as you can see, I'm just going through and I'm kind of doing the same type of thing that I did on the top of the Aussie cones. I'm just uh, very lightly adding charcoal to the tones that I've laid down uh, initially with my brush. And as you can see, it's gritty, right? It has that gritty charcoal texture, but um, don't worry about that because we're gonna be going in with um, smudgers and our brushes and we're going to be softening all that up and blending that together so that the aesthetic that it has when you initially lay it down is not going to be the, the final product. So now as you can see, we're taking our uh, smudger and I'm just uh, very lightly pressing and, uh, and I'm smoothing and bringing out that gradation in between uh, the different tones that, that we have. And all the while, I'm not forgetting about form. When it comes to the, the forehead of the giraffe, I'm pulling down. When it comes to the nose, I'm pulling sideways. And when it comes to the lip, I'm pulling left to right. That underlying form is absolutely crucial to remember on every stroke of your pencil, your brush, your smudger, and even your eraser, especially your eraser work. But here we have a kind of a blotchy uh, texture and that's one of the reasons why I like to start off my tones and my underlying form with the brush because it gives me a really nice light tone something that I can build all of the tones in between that tone and the darkest tone and that allows me to be able to really accentuate um, my overall value scale for this individual piece so definitely keep that in mind. But here I'm just going in with my Montezuma eraser. And this is one of the steps that I love. I'm, I'm gonna get rid of this, uh, this form line here because I, I know that it's there. I just put it there um, for you so you could see. And this is how I do the majority of my detail work. This is something that we showcased a lot of in um, the Great White Shark tutorial that we did where I was showing you guys all the different things that you could do when it comes to detail work with your um, erasers, whether that be your Ahuhu eraser, your Pentel Click eraser, or like I'm using now, my Mono Zero eraser. I'd have to say out of all of them though, the Mono Zero is probably my favorite because of its versatility. Um, as you can see, I'm able to go in and put lines in. I can have really short, small pulls and that'll give me that, that really, really short hair texture like we had on the lion's face in uh, our other tutorial that we did. But now here for the nostril, I'm just gonna put in a nice, saturated, defined line for the nostril. There we are. And then there's some other defined lines here. This, these are the nostrils, they're very you know, kind of crinkly. And so right here what I'm doing is Anywhere where I know that there's going to be a, a really, really dark tone, um, I can go in with my pencil because I have a lot of control and I can really speak to that part of it. And like I said, even though it's gritty, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit it with a smudger um, after I'm done here laying all this charcoal down and it's going to smooth it together. Here you are. See that? Boom. That's it. And, and as you, you know, study these tutorials 
and, and you start to see my approach, my approach for the most part is um, very much the same. It doesn't really change regardless of uh, the type of animal that we're drawing. The only thing that might change is maybe um, the steps that I use to get to that desired um, look. And that really depends on what the texture is. You know, if, if it's a giraffe or a lion, obviously um, we're gonna be using a lot of brush work. We're going to be using a lot of eraser work um, for all of the hair. Whereas, you know, if it's a shark, it's probably just gonna be all brush work and we don't really have too much eraser work outside of trying to convey that underlying form, which is a, a last step. The hammerhead tutorial does a good job of speaking to that. Okay. So now the eye, the good old eye. Eyes can be tricky, but in this case, what we're gonna do is even though if you look at the reference image, you can see that this part of the eyelashes of this eye, um, it's all clumped together. It's one kind of black mass, but um, I'm gonna go through and I'm just gonna build it and we'll, we'll get to that point. So here what I'm doing is I'm pulling the eyelashes individually and then I'm clumping them together. Now I could have started off, so well, you know, a lot of people could say, well, why didn't you just clump them together initially? It's like, well, I could have done that, but I just, I, I prefer this approach because I find that it keeps you honest. And so now right here, I'm putting in a nice, heavy, saturated, defined line. One of the few defined lines in this entire drawing. This is probably the single biggest defined line. And then here, this eye has a slight, a slight bend to it on this side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and accentuate my line there. There we go. And now we can go in and we can fill, fill this in. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my 3 16 smudger and I'm going to build these tones here. Now, essentially what this is doing is this is giving that eye that really nice, that really nice form that you see in the, in the reference image. I'm gonna take my mono zero eraser here. I'm just kind of accentuating this, this white line. And, that, and this is one of the reasons why I love the mono zero eraser is because you can get into really tight spaces like this. There we are. Okay, do a quick little tone check continue to build this. It's um, a little darker. Let's see how I'm building this and I'm staying away from that white line. This is adding to that, that form for me. And then here on this side, you see how there's some pretty heavy lines that kind of come up over the front of the eye? Well, this is how you can get those. You just stand your smudger on its side and then just do straight pulls. Okay. Now when it comes to the eye, what I like to do is I like to start from the bottom and then I'll work my way up. And this is kind of like with the eyelashes. You know, you, you, you start slow and then you build up to your end goal. I like to do it this way because I find that it allows me to really bring out that rounded look of the eye. Um, and it's, it's just kind of like cut, cutting hair. I like to start off lightly and build up to my desired effect versus just going straight first make, oh yeah, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna fill this in with a bunch of dark tone and then, you know, maybe it just looks like a black blob. There we go. But this is just a medium charcoal here. I'm starting from the bottom and I'm just kind of packing it in. When you look at this reference image, this eye is probably the darkest tone in the entire drawing that we're going to have. Okay. And then you can take your medium charcoal because it allows for more control. We're just gonna go in, we're gonna add some, some detail work here. Looks like this is where some of the hair starts on the giraffe's 
the face below the eye. Then here we're just bringing out some darker tones on the forehead. And because it's got that gritty look, we don't want that. So I'm going to go in with my smudger and just kind of blend that. And I'm going through and I'm just uh, continuing to, to build those tones. And then here what I'm doing is I'm just pulling the charcoal just very lightly. And this is giving me kind of that underlying uh, texture for um, when it comes time to really pack in uh, the texture of the hair of the giraffe's face. So here with the smudger, what I'm doing is I'm doing the second of three steps to accomplish good hair texture. The first step was the brushwork that was bringing out the lighter tones. Now it's smudger work where we're accentuating the dark tones. And then eraser work is where we solidify the tone breaks and we optimize on that contrast between tonal values. But then here on this uh, a jaw muscle, I'm gonna take my smudger, I'm gonna lay it on the line that I laid down in my outline. And I'm just gonna subtly go back and forth, left to right, very lightly. You don't have to push very hard at all. And then I'm just gonna clean this up with my Mono Zero eraser right here. I'm going to go in with my graphite pencil and just add some lines here. And when it comes to the nose, this is uh, just detail work. So this is a uh, medium charcoal. Just make sure that your charcoal pencils are very sharp for this step. You can go in and you can add all sorts of like little details, little spots where like you make the hairs coming out of the giraffe's lips. And then here, this is where we're going to separate the lips. So we're gonna put a nice uh, defined line here. There we go. That looks clean. So what that's done is that's brought the top lip and brought it in front of the lower lip. Now we're just doing quick, short pulls for the hair on this draft. And uh, you can get carried away with um, with this part of it, but just, or just remember when it comes to detail work, so much of the time, uh, less is truly more. So um, you don't have to get carried away with your detail work at all. Sometimes just a good thing to keep in the back of your mind is get in and get out. You don't want to overwork the paper. So now what we're doing is we're going to grab number three smudger grab some charcoal. We're going to blend everything that we just laid down with our medium charcoal pencil. Okay, now we're just pulling left to right. We're bringing out the form of those jaw muscles of the giraffe. And then here I'm just beefing up all of the spots on the draft's face. So I'm gonna grab some medium charcoal because the medium charcoal has more binder in it than the soft charcoal and thus it's gonna give us a, a, a richer, a darker tone. But here real quick, what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm pushing left to right. And as you can see, this is giving the edges of the spots kind of that jagged look. So I'm thinking about my texture in this step, even though I'm not going to be able to really accentuate and bring out that texture until I use my Mono Zero Eraser. But you can just dab it real quick. Just make sure you're your smudger is loaded up with a lot of charcoal so that when you hit it on the paper, um, it builds that tone for you and you hardly have to push it all. Yeah, just make sure you're checking those tones and here I want to lighten it up. So as, as you can see, we do have some spots on this giraffe. They're a little lighter. And so now what I'm doing is I'm 
adding another layer to the fur of the face of this giraffe. And this is how I'm doing it. So I'm pushing up and then I'm pulling down, pushing up and then I'm pulling down. And I'm being sure that when I push up and I pull down that I'm leaving. I try to leave as much white space in between my poles as the poles themselves take up with that darker tone. So it's very much a balance. So just keep that in mind. Remember, lighter tones are just as important. And because the human eye subconsciously picks lighter tones up first when it looks at an image, you definitely want to accentuate those as much as possible in your drawing so that you can maximize your value scale. And so now what we're doing is, this is the almost the final step of really bringing out that texture. This is the same approach that we used in the lion tutorial for all of the short hair on the lion's face. This is adding detail by taking charcoal away. This is a fundamental benefit of the three-layered uh, method. And this is one of the reasons why if you're just starting out in drawing or if maybe you're um, trying to get familiar with charcoal for the first time, this is a method that can really help you because it's very forgiving. You don't have to nail any part of your drawing right out of the gate with when you're laying down your tones and uh, building form with your brushes because the Montezuma eraser can, can fix a lot of those mistakes for you. But now here's what I wanted to show you. So basically I'm going to pull for on one side and then I'm going to move to the other side of my dark tones and I'm going to pull from that side. And as you can see, that gives me a really nice texture. And now I'm just going to go in with my brush very lightly, very lightly here. I'm not touching or pushing hard on the paper at all. I'm letting the brush blend those tones for me in spots that I need it. And this is helping to bring out that underlying form of my giraffe here. Okay. So now let's start on the neck. So just like with the face, what we're doing is we're hitting this with a brush, with a soft charcoal. And I'm just getting that base layer. All right. Now what I'm doing is I'm building up my dark tones first, like always. And I'm just building up all of the spots on this giraffe's neck. There we are. And one of the reasons why I laid down that initial light layer with, uh, of charcoal with the brush was because when I go back in with my Monozero eraser to create that furry texture, it's going to be very easy. Okay, so we're just going to erase this here. I'm going to bring this neck over to the right a little bit. There we go. All right, now this is pretty cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my smudger. We're just going to do a quick pull from right to left. There we are. We're just going to keep doing that. Now on this part, basically what you want to do is you want to pull it, bring it, drop it down, and then pull it again. And with each one, push a little harder and then a little lighter and then push a little harder, and then push a little lighter. And then turn it sideways and run it up close to the neck. And then you can pull out. There we are. And this is gonna give us a really cool effect for the giraffe's neck. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my medium charcoal I'm just going to put a, a just a very light defined line, kind of kind of a broken defined line. It's not heavily saturated. It's more or less there, but the whole point of this is to push the hair back. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking my medium charcoal and I'm just kind of building up those those darker tones that we see in the hair here. You know, it looks kind of gritty, so now I'm going to take my brush, just very lightly pull from right to left blend that all together. There we are. That's nice. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my smudger and I'm just smudging the hair that's immediately next to the neck. And the reason why is because that's where all the hair is the closest together. So light's not really going to penetrate through there like they are on the ends here. So now I'm just going to take my Mono Zero Eraser. And I'm just doing real light, subtle pulls. You want to be careful when you're pulling left to right because if you have a dirty tip, um, it'll actually put like a, a spot of charcoal on that side and it won't look nearly as realistic. Okay, but now we're done with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some uh, soft charcoal with my brush here. I'm just going to darken up this part of uh, the neck. As you can see from the reference image, this part of the neck is uh, uh, very dark. And by darkening this up, what this does is this brings the head of the giraffe forward and makes it look like, you know, the jaw and the, and the nose of the giraffe are closer to us than the neck is. And that's what we want. That brings that, that, that realism to us. But now here with the Mono Zero Eraser, I'm just going in and I'm, uh, as you can see from the reference image, this is uh, where our light source is coming from the right. So it, the whole right side of the giraffe is um, very bright, very bright. So very light tones. And then here we can start to build those tones. Nice, short little strokes. We do one line, we pass into one line, and then we come back into another line just under that line. And remember, each stroke you move over so that you have that same amount of space and dark tones immediately next to your light tone, and that'll um, give you that, that, that furry texture that we want. There we are. So much of this approach is just, just planning ahead. You know, like when I laid down all of this charcoal for this check, uh, texture, I hadn't even done all the hair on the back of the neck yet, but I knew that this was coming. And so as you draw more, you'll, you'll start to understand why you're doing things three steps before um, you actually go in, like say with your eraser and finish that texture, so. And then here, this is a little darker overall. So I'm just taking my brush very lightly. I don't want to lose um, all of the texture that I just laid down with my um, eraser. And this is one of the reasons why the brush is so important for you as an artist, especially a charcoal artist, and especially if you like to utilize this type of approach. It's because it gives you um, a very nice aesthetic. Um, and the biggest thing with the brush that I have found, I'm just gonna darken in the ears here, the biggest thing with the brush that I have found is that it, it really allows me to um, speak to form. So much of the time in, in realistic type drawing, whether you're drawing people or animals or, uh, or buildings, a lot of it is all about your form. Tones are important, yes. Um, texture, of course, is important, but underlying form is absolutely crucial. Form is one of the hardest things to um, comprehend and execute on when it comes to drawings. Um, I struggled with it for, for a long time, but I never stopped. I never stopped drawing, I never stopped learning, I never stopped reading, and, um, and that's all you have to do. That's all you have to do to get better. But here what I'm doing is I'm just going in, I'm just doing subtle, subtle detail work. If you look at the reference image here, some of these dark spots on the giraffes, they have darker parts, like blotches almost, if you will, within them. And so a medium charcoal hit real quick um, can speak to that. But that's pretty much it for this one, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a little longer than uh, other tutorials that we've done, but uh, I really had a lot of fun drawing this one. It's the first time I've ever drawn a giraffe, so hopefully it won't be the last. And that is pretty much it. I like how this one turned out. Voila. Yes, that is the process. Um, that is by no means the only process. It's just uh, the way that I approach my charcoal pieces 
and it's a way that's proven and you know if it works for you then that's great and remember you know if you guys want to focus on one specific concept like say um you want to learn about implied lines versus defined lines and that's the only thing you want to focus on uh definitely check out our step-by-step -step drawing tutorial playlist that we have on uh on the channel and um you'll be able to focus on individual concepts so with that said happy new year to you i hope 2020 is filled with more drawings than most people can fathom for you and uh yeah that is it that is all i got for you guys in this one uh remember if you guys enjoyed this video and you know you find yourself enjoying all the videos that we make here at Mr. creations um i encourage you to definitely like and be sure to subscribe also when you subscribe hit the bell Ding! Uh, yes so that you guys can be notified when our latest and our greatest videos come out. My name is Brayden, and you guys have just been tipped off. I hope you guys had fun, and uh, I will see you in the next one.